Hi guys, it's Claudia. Welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited to bring you the first vlog in our anime corner. And today we're going to be talking about my five recent favorite shoujo anime that I think would be really great to watch with your loved ones or for like a really cute date night. I wanted to have this video out for Valentine's Day, but as you can see, the room is very empty. I'm getting ready to move again, which is why the setups are very simple. I really want to make some special sets and do some really beautiful backgrounds in my vlogs. But for now, it's going to be the sloth and the toast <laughs> for a while. But we're really cozy today because we're in my bed and we're going to talk about some of my favorite new series in the world. Counting down from five, my fifth pick is Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. You can already hear from the name that it's a super, super sweet anime and follows a girl who has a dream to be the kingdom's most beloved patisserie maker. She ends up meeting a fairy who was kind of enslaved before she took him in. And the story kind of follows their little budding romance, their little love-hate relationship, their banter on this girl's journey to achieving her dream. The art style is very pastel-like and if you love sort of like fantasy, bickering couples kind of setups, I think you would really, really like this show. The next one I want to talk about is called Tomochan is a Girl. It's totally opposite from Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Tomochan is a Girl takes place in a modern setup, in a high school setup, where there's a girl named Tomo. She has always been a total tomboy, and she's always been really seen as one of the guys. Her best guy friend even thinks that after growing up together so many years, that his best friend is indeed a guy and not a girl. Like he's mistaken his best friend's gender for like God knows how many years since they've been growing up. But finally in like high school, Tomo-chan falls in love with um, her best guy friend and she wants to confess to him but he doesn't really see her as a girl at all. So it follows Tomo-chan's journey to befriending more girls around the school and trying to be girly and then finally like embracing who she is and her spunkiness, her like refreshing tomboy personality is something that will slowly captivate her best guy friend even though her best guy friend is literally the most clueless shoujo character I've like ever seen and then I watched Gekkan Shoujo Nozaki-kun and he's like arguably a little bit even more clueless than Nozaki at times. So if you're looking for a shoujo anime that is a little bit unconventional, very lighthearted, really fun, um, it doesn't lean into the romance too too much, it's very great for kind of like a girl's night in or just staying in with your partner on like a cozy Friday evening, this is like a really fun show for that. The next show that I want to talk about is more along the cozy side and slice of life of romance. It's called Hori Mia and if you guys have been around the anime circles online, for the last couple of years, you may have heard of Hori Mia. A long, long time ago, I introduced Hori Mia's manga in a Manga Mondays vlog series. And at the time, there was so little hype around Hori Mia, and I love the show so much. It follows a girl named Hori who is always focused on doing chores at home, taking care of her brother, really helping her parents out because her parents are separated. And she ends up falling in love with a really unlikely guy. This kind of nerdy emo has his hair in his face at the beginning of the series guy named Miyamura and Miyamura is actually a really really kind and lovely character he's really shy he's really sweet once he cuts his hair he turns into a total pretty boy and all the girls are over him and they just have a really lovely stable relationship that you usually don't really see in anime series. In anime series and also in a lot of romance books, it focuses a lot on the buildup and progression of how the characters get together. Once the characters are together, usually we're pretty near the end of the series. But Horimiya just lets them date and go about their regular life and we get to follow their beautiful middle school nostalgic days. And aside from the main couple, Hori and Yamura, there are also a couple of really, really lovely side characters. I would argue that the side characters are oftentimes even more interesting than the main couple because the main couple gets together pretty quickly versus the side characters, they all have really different personalities and just seeing all of them interact, seeing how they kind of find love in their little perspective is really lovely to watch. It's a show that is so close and near and dear to my heart. It's so heartwarming. I cried when I watched the finale of it. 
I believe the anime right now is two seasons, so they have all released and you can watch them all in one go. And if you're looking for something that's just like a wrap up in a blanket by yourself, drink tea and relax for the evening kind of show, Horimiya is that show. I love the show so much. Please give the show a try. My next recommendation is a series that I literally can't stop talking about. Any otaku fan or anime fan that asks me what is a show I should try and watch that's romance themed, I will always say Wotakoi, which is love is hard for an otaku. One of the reasons why I like this show a lot is because it doesn't take place in a typical middle school or high school setting. It follows four working adults who are otaku. And a lot of times when you're working in an office in a corporate environment, you don't want to bring up your unusual hobby tastes or your gaming habits or your anime faves to coworkers. And this is exactly what happens to these characters. They all have different things they like. Gaming, manga, um, doujin, cosplay, and they're all really wonderful fun aspects of their lives which they try to hide in their co-worker setting and also when they are dating too dating is hard for an otaku you guys know it like it's hard to find someone who will align with your weird tastes and weird interests but you know if you find the right person then they're able to support you with your favorite hobbies right so wotaku is really really wonderful in that aspect there are a lot of references for gaming nerds cosplay nerds doujin fans and a lot of things that are rooted in the subculture that you might not pick up on if you're not an otaku yourself. So I feel like Wotakoi is something that is a series made by otaku for otaku and it is just so wonderfully awkward in its romance and also so sweet. There are sometimes childhood flashbacks or middle school flashbacks. There are a lot of real world scenarios like drinking together after work, rushing to the bookstore to get your favorite new installment of the manga that just released, working overtime, or bringing all your stuff to a convention and then going back to work exhausted on Monday. There are a lot of these references which makes Wotokoi one of my favorite series of all time. Next up, I wanted to give two special shout outs. One is to a movie that made me ball like a baby and the second is a shoujo anime romance that is airing this season. As of right now, there are about six to seven episodes and I am crazily waiting for the next episode because it is so sweet. So first off, the movie I want to talk about is called Makia. Makia takes place in a futuristic or kind of post-apocalyptic world. That's kind of what I remember it as. And in this world, there's like a race of people who age really, really slowly. And so there's this young woman named Makia who ends up adopting a baby that was left on the side of the street. She ends up raising this child to be her own son. But because she's from this race of like special humans or elves or something, special humans, aging slower than her actual son. And this is not a spoiler because this is kind of established at the beginning that there's this like race with special abilities. They're kind of like keepers of humanity in a way. They will weave fabric together as a show of the passing of time. So they are very like intertwined with the way that time moves in the world, but they also age very slowly themselves. So she ends up watching her son kind of grow up and their relationship ends up being quite strained. The show focuses a lot on like the passage of time, growing pains, family ties, like mother-son relationship. There are so many wonderful themes in Makia. I cried so much the end i would really really appreciate it if you guys go give it a try i feel like it's a movie that doesn't really get mentioned as much when we talk about love because a lot of anime series are only focused on like romance technically this vlog is also focused on romance but this movie is really wonderful i wanted to really spotlight it so i hope you guys will give that one a try the second series that I really, really enjoyed recently that I'm super into, that I can't stop talking about, I mentioned it to my partner at least like three times now and made him watch the teaser for it. It is Yubisaki 2 Ren Ren. Oh my goodness, it is so, so wonderful. It follows a girl named Yuki who is pretty much deaf. Like she grew up deaf, she has hearing aids in, she can only hear a couple of noises here and there. It essentially focuses on Yuki's world, her perspective, how she interacts with people, how she kind of navigates the world with sign language, with gestures, how she communicates in a way that is removed from verbal spoken word. The reason why I love this series so much is because, again, it takes place in a university setting, so it's removed from the typical high school drama stuff. There aren't really high school tropes there. The two characters are very unique in their own way. Yuki, we've already talked about. The main guy character, Itsuomi, he has traveled around the world a lot. He is trilingual and he has a 
really big enthusiasm to learn about sign language. One, because he's really into Yuki, but two, because I think he's so interested in other cultures and other people's perspectives as a world traveler that he's really interested in how sign language opens up a new world of communication. I love this series because I really enjoy Koi no Katachi, A Silent Voice, which was also focused on a female main protagonist who had a disability. I think it's really great that we're animating series so that we can see a wider spectrum of characters who do have disabilities and we're able to kind of show their perspective and tell their story a little bit more. I also think the animation and the aesthetic is really well done in the series because there isn't really any speaking on Yuki's part. The animators focused a lot on the shading of the background, the extra special effects to make the atmosphere convey the emotion that Yuki is feeling. We get a lot of Yuki's internal monologue, which is really lovely. A lot of characters will write things on phones or whiteboards, which is another way of communication. And if you look really closely at the characters, they have extra shading on their faces, a lot of details in their eyes, and also on their lips and it's sort of a way for the animators to visually convey really subtle nuances in the motions that you might not really feel if the details were gone. I felt like the character design was so carefully, lovingly done. Some of the angles of the faces are so detailed in order to convey subtle nuances in their expressions, and there are also a lot of things like how the eyelashes drape, how the hair falls, the subtle body movements. So I really, really feel like there was a lot of care placed into the character design and to the body language as well. So if you guys are following the current anime season, I would really highly recommend Yubisaki to Ren Ren. But remember, the anime is still going. It's airing right now. And the manga took a hiatus because the author was having a baby and I believe since 2023 the manga has started up again so the manga is still not finished I think there are about 10 volumes out right now and I need to go start reading them right away because I need to know what happens in the series anyways these are some of my romance recommendations for you guys I tried to pick ones that had really different aesthetics really different vibes or atmospheres so I hope you really like the shows that I recommend if you guys have some lovely recommendations as well I would love to see them in the comments below if you guys are an older viewer of this channel you know that I love slice of life fantasy romance especially like a lot of romance shoujo stuff and magical girl stuff anything that's like sparkly and pretty I have a really soft spot for and I'm always looking for a lot of series that have this sort of genre and aesthetic so anyways I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did don't make sure to subscribe for the next one and I will talk to you guys in my next video very soon bye